what actually happens on the closing day of your home. Hi, I'm Mark Jensen, team leader of the Mark Jensen team, and we're going to talk about that process. So you've made it through the lengthy process of searching for a home, fighting through maybe bidding wars, awaiting the call that you got the house. Now it's time to celebrate. But before you pop that bubbly, there are several loose ends that we need to tie up. And all of these happen on or near closing day. So regardless of whether you bought your home in Vancouver, Toronto, or Burlington, closing on a house can be a very nerve wracking day. It's momental, uh, monumental for both the buyer and the seller. So it's best to go into it prepared. So today in this Tuesday talk, we'll show you what really happens on closing day from both perspectives of buying and selling and giving you insight into having a very smooth closing day. So from the seller's perspective, and let's focus on that first. On the seller's side, closing day is the day that you officially transfer the property over to someone else. So of course it can be very emotional and it's also an exciting day, which means you don't want your brain to be scattered with a bunch of small details. So trying to take care of these things in advance is best. So it's best to be organized uh, as much as possible. And there's a lot of uh, that takes some proactive steps beforehand. So with the right process leading up to the uh, up to closing day uh, and having the right people by your side, you'll be handling handling over those keys in no time at all. So here's a seller's a quick seller's uh, checklist. So to be best prepared on closing day, keep this this checklist in mind and up It'll take a couple of weeks up into advance, but the first thing you need to do is give your lawyer a copy of your mortgage, your deed, your property tax bills, or other documents that you received when you first purchased the house. So that will set up a meeting with your uh, real, or lawyer. So don't cancel your house insurance until the policy, until the deal is closed. One thing you do need to know, if you're moving out before the close, at least 15 days in, in advance, you need to let your insurance company know that the home is vacant because this can affect your home insurance coverage. So you're gonna visit your lawyer a couple days before closing to sign all the paperwork and hand over a set of keys or arrange to leave them in the lockbox that will be up to the lawyers on both sides. Have all your utility meters read on closing day so you're uh, only responsible for your share of the utilities. In addition, you need to notify your cable, your phone providers, and make sure that's disconnected. If you do have an oil tank in your house, make sure that it's filled on closing day. You wanna cancel any post dated checks at your bank so you're not paying for anything after your closing. Uh, make sure that you've moved out of the house completely by 5 p.m. at the latest and left the house in broom swept condition with no garbage anywhere on the property. So from the buyer's perspective, uh, so from the buyer's side, closing day can feel a bit overwhelming. You've gone through this long process of buying a home, winning the bid, and you're even possibly relocating. And now you're going to be signing a bunch of documents with a vague understanding of what they all say. And by the end of it, you'll own a house. So that can be a, put a lot of pressure on you. And um, so it's crucial that you have somebody that's by your side that can help you with the research and help you explain all of the different paperwork and translate all of that legal jargon into plain, simple English. So as long as you do the following things, you're going to uh, be bringing out the uh, celebratory champagne and popping the cork for a nice glass. So here's the buyer's checklist. So on uh, to ensure closing day runs smoothly, keep this checklist in mind. And again, it's up the weeks up to your closing. Some of it's done a bit ahead of time. Some of it's on the, the day itself. So schedule your final home inspection with your realtor a couple of days before closing and ensure that the home condition is at the exact same as when you put the offer in. You're gonna to wanna to be checking the appliances, making sure everything is, is working. So arrange your moving time late afternoon, remember 5 p.m. or later, or ideally the next day. So you also wanna arrange your insurance so you can have ensure that you have the full replacement cost covered, provide the mortgage lender with all the necessary documents well before closing day, so you'll have a better idea of what your final out-of-pocket 
costs will be. So you're going to work with this with your realtor. You're going to get a statement of adjustments before your closing day. So you know all the closing uh, costs and it's not going to catch you by surprise. So at least two days before the closing, deliver the balance of the money to your lawyer to be able to close the deal. Tell your lawyer how you'll be taking title of this property. This includes whether or not uh, you'll be a joint uh, ownership or who will get the property in case somebody passes away. So have your uh, lawyer also uh, order your title insurance. Arrange to have your cable, your telephone uh, providers to begin service on the day immediately after closing. You're going to want to contact the utility companies to ensure that the meters are going to be read on closing day. So you are only responsible for the charges after you move in on the house. So in order to be successful on the closing day, it's important to take some proactive steps beforehand. So following these checklists, whether you're buying or selling your home, should help you feel a little bit more e at ease when it comes to the day of closing. With the help of an experienced realtor professional, the right legal team beside you, a good mortgage broker as well, and this video, you'll be having your housewarming party before you know it. Congratulations, you've done it.